Well, hey, church, welcome back to our midweek devotional. I'm excited to continue uh, as we walk through the book of Ephesians. And the way this works is we try to supplement our Sunday sermons, uh, which are available on YouTube and Spotify, just like this is. We supplement them through this devotional. And I want to encourage you to subscribe to us uh, so that you can get all uh, of this content. It's very important to be able to walk through a book of the Bible together so that we can um, together learn more about that book. Sometimes it's just so difficult to get through um, all of this wonderfully rich content that is available in a book like the book of Ephesians. So Ephesians chapter 2 is where we are today, Ephesians chapter 2. And if you like to underline or take notes um, in your Bible, I suggest you do a lot of that in this passage. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you, this is important, were dead in the trespasses of sin, and in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, um, my wife likes to circle, highlight, underline anytime she finds the words but God in Scripture. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses. So Paul, like once again, brings up that word, hey, you were dead. He says that he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We talked a little bit about this passage as we walked through baptism and how baptism is a picture of this new life where we were dead and he raised us up into that. And today I want to encourage you all to live in the power of that new life. As we read this, we see a couple things. First of all, Paul's not shying away from, much like Jesus did, Jesus did not shy away from calling uh, out things like they were. He was not subtle at times. And Paul is neither. Paul says you were dead in trespasses of sin. He says you followed the course of this world. We would probably term it uh, in our modern day language, you followed culture. Whatever culture did, you did. Whatever culture watched, you watched. Whatever culture listened to, you listened to. However culture dressed, you dressed. And uh, he says, not only did you follow the course of this world, as in everybody in culture, in the world, kind of does this next thing, following the prince of the power of the air. And the spirit that is now at work, where? In the sons of disobedience. So again, Paul is not saying, hey, y'all messed up and you, you maybe told some white lies and, you know, it was time to give your life to Jesus. No, he's saying, you were dead and you were at war with Christ. I was dead. I was at war with Christ. He's saying, listen, not only did you tell some white lies and maybe need Jesus, you were following the prince of of the power of the air. You were following culture and the forces that are anti-God. This is, this is the, the hard part, the, the bad news uh, that makes the good news of the gospel good news. Because when we read the words, but God, we're like, oh, thank you. Because I didn't, I guess, I guess I lie to myself at times and don't always realize just how desperately in need of Christ I was and am. It's not like we kind of did some things that were maybe wrong and we needed to go to heaven. And so, well, we prayed this prayer and now we get to go to heaven. And there's really bad people that are really out there. And those bad people, 
they do things that are bad. I didn't really do that, but there are people who do bad. They really need salvation. I, I needed to go to heaven. And so, yeah. No, Paul's like, hey, I want to remind all of you. You are currently followers of Christ. Remember, this book, this, this book of Ephesians is written to churches in the city of Ephesus and around Ephesus. And he's like, hey, you were dead. He even uh, adds in there in verse 3, among whom we all once lived. So he's like, not only you, but, but me. I was doing the same thing. He says in verse 4, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. So Paul takes and shows this massive transformation. He's saying, hey, you were like this. God made you like this. And today I want to challenge you to live like you are, not like you used to be. Today, I want to challenge myself to live like I am, not like I used to be. So many of us are followers of Christ. We are disciples of Christ, apprentices of Christ. Yet we live like we used to live before we accepted Him, before we believed in Him and chose to follow Him. Some of the signs of this, well, we, we follow culture. Signs of living like we, we're led by our own spirit or by the spirit of, of, of this world, is that we follow culture. We, every choice we make is determined by culture. The things we do is because culture does it. We live the way we live because those around us live that way. It's very much not being led by the spirit. It's being led by the people who make choices around us. So again, we watch things that do not agree with Scripture. We look at things that do not agree with Scripture because eh, that's what everyone does. We follow culture. But I think really one of the, the, the main ones, he says in verse 3, this is a massive sign of us living like we used to live. He says, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. Now, there's two, there's two parts of this. Uh, we see here, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh. In other words, whatever, we, whatever our body tells us, we do. Uh, we we want to eat that, we eat it. We want to go there, we go there. We want to touch that, we touch that. We want to say that, we say that. Our body controls us rather than the spirit of God controlling our body. And so we give in to our appetites regularly and consistently. And so whatever we want, that's what we do. And this is a sign that we are not living like we should be. This is a sign that we're not living in the, in the life that Christ brought, bought us, uh, gave us, but instead we're living like we used to live in the, the way that when we were dead in the trespasses of sin. The difference is now we have, because Christ made us alive, we have the power to change. So are we changing or are we just continually doing whatever it is we want and think we should do? And he says this, uh, he says, the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. This twofold part here is really important because I think our culture goes one of two ways here. Number one, uh, we can be completely ruled by our body and our flesh. So we, we don't take care of ourselves. We're not healthy. Um, we're, we're giving in to lust. We're giving in to appetite. We're giving in to self continually. And whatever our body wants, that's what our body gets. And many in our culture live like this. This is um, a, a common problem. Christians should be having the Holy Spirit tell our bodies what to do. And it should be telling our bodies what to consume, what to look at, what to, you know, all of the things that our bodies do should be led through the lens of the Holy Spirit. Often we are uh, sadly very unhealthy as Christians, and we, and we shouldn't be. We, we clearly should not be living by the passions of our flesh and the desires of our body. This is not just true for morality issues. This is true for all 
health issues. This is true for all issues affecting our body. So if our body wants to rest, we rest. If our body wants to um, go someplace, we go someplace. If our body wants to eat Doritos, we give in and we eat Doritos. And Paul says that's not how it should be. In fact, Paul talks a lot about health in his writings. And um, he talks a lot about sports and different things like that. And I'm not saying all of us are going to be super athletes or anything like that. But we, we should be having the Holy Spirit control our appetites. The Holy Spirit should be controlling what we consume. Then he says, the desires of the body and the mind. And this is equally important because I think the other part of America is like, yeah, you know what? I, I will myself into, into being healthy and I will myself. I've made my own body into like this temple. And we kind of go the opposite way where it's like, this is all about self-control and, and I do this because I am healthy and it becomes very much about ourself. And so we have these two polar opposites of like, yeah, I'm very unhealthy because I give in to whatever my body wants, or I'm very healthy because I make myself do this and I, am, I tell myself to do this, but it's all done through us. It's all done through our mind. And it's not done through the Holy Spirit. So because of this, it leads to pride. It leads to insecurity. It leads to anxiety. It leads to all these things because it's done through the lens of us telling ourselves what we can or can't do. And this is why you have not just a regular um, Holy Spirit-led focus on health. You have an obsession with health because of this. And so he says, we once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. And then he says, and were by children, by nature, children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Now, he used another word earlier, sons of disobedience. In other words, we were born into being disobedient to God. And this is very much similar language when he's saying that we are by nature children of wrath. In other words, Wrath is like a father that rules over us. And so we know we're living in our own flesh and we're living like we used to be when wrath rules over us like a, like a parent where we just can't, whatever, if we're angry, we're angry. We give in to wrath. Now, all of us are going to at times struggle to keep our temper. But I find it so fascinating here that Paul talks about the, the idea of losing control of your temper. So we are, we are completely ruled by wrath. So if we're upset, we don't control it. It just bubbles up and, and pours over. And Paul draws this parallel between um, giving into the passions of the flesh, carrying out the desires of the body, and losing control of our temper, being controlled by our temper. I find this so fascinating because here in America, we, we kind of think of like um, morality sins is like those are bad. Um, certainly murder, bad. But losing your temper, well, that's no big deal. We all lose our temper. It's just my, I just lost my temper. We just kind of, we, well, that's just who I am. I'm, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I, I love big or whatever we say to justify it. We, um, we so often don't compare losing or not having control of our temper to not having control of our body or not having control of our mind. But Paul is, is, is kind of talking about all three, saying, hey, you were dead, and so you couldn't control the passions of your flesh. You were dead, so you couldn't control your mind. So you gave in to these thoughts about, well, I know that that person means this about me, or I know that this person thinks that. You gave in to those thoughts, or like, or I, I, you made everything about your mind, and it was like, you know, I will myself into this. And, or you're ruled by your, your temper, your wrath, so you just blow up. And then you're like, well, I just, I just kind of blew up. It was, you know, well, they pushed my last button. But Paul says that's a sign that you're not living in this, in this life that you could be living in. You're alive in Christ. He's given you grace. He's given you mercy. He's given you salvation. He's given you all of these things. You have the power to have the Holy Spirit lead the passions of your flesh, your mind, and your wrath. You don't have to be a child of wrath. 
you can be led by the Holy Spirit and thus control your temper. Controlling your temper is very important. It, it's, it's mentioned multiple times throughout Scripture, and yet it's just passed off in America as like, yeah, no big deal. But in Scripture, it's a very big deal. So we ask ourselves today, well, am I living the way that I should be living? Am I living in the power of the Holy Spirit? Am I living like I'm made alive in Christ? Or am I consistently giving in to my, my, my flesh, my mind, or my temper? Or am I, am I taking advantage of and learning how to, through the sanctification process, to have the Holy Spirit lead my body and my mind and my temper? Very important questions that we have to ask ourselves today. But the good news is in verse 4, God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And he kind of closes out this, this section, verses 7 through 10, so that in the coming ages He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and he offers us this really great reminder. It is not your own doings. It is the gift of God, not a result of work so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in, Christ, in them. So Paul closes out this little, this little passage. He's talking about like, look, stop living like you did. Start living like you are. And then he says, hey, I want to remind you that even when you struggle with this, when, you, when, you're, when you're having a hard time with this, God has grace and he has mercy and he's created you for good works. So he's empowering you to do these good works. So don't live controlled by your body or your mind or your temper. Instead, live controlled through the Holy Spirit. He sanctifies you and he continually makes us more and more like in his image when we're willing to be aware of areas of need things that are controlling us that we need to hand over to Him and say, God, I give you my passions. I give you my desires. I give you my mind. I give you even my temper. I hand to you and say, would you be in control of it and not me? Hey, always remember, church, you matter.